Okay, question eight. Uh, looks like it's on series. Going to need a bit of room at the top here for this one, I think. Um, looks like a bit of an awkward uh, proof type question. So we're told that the first term is arithmetic, so it's going to go up or down the same amount each time between terms. The first term is A. Second term, the common difference is 2A plus 1. Uh, so to, with all of these questions, um, sequences questions, I'd just like to write out the first few terms just to see what's going on. So that would be 3a plus 1. Uh, so term 3, if you add another 2a plus 1, that would be 5a plus, plus 2. And then the next term is obviously going to be 7a plus 3 and so on. Uh, so looking at this, the nth term, uh, well you can already see a bit of a pattern here. Uh, if you if you do the term number n uh, times it by 2 and subtract 1, you can see you get the number before the a. Um, so the nth term will be 2n minus 1 times by a, that's how you get the number before the a. And then to get uh, the number on the right hand side, so to get this number, it looks like you just subtract one from all the n numbers. So I think the nth term we can write like this. Um, so we've got to find, what we want to do is to find a formula for the sum of all those terms. Now I don't think you can just you can't just substitute this into the the formula for the the sum of an arithmetic sequence. I think you have to derive this given this given the sequence we've got at the top here. Um, so let's just clear a bit of space and then we can start adding these terms together. If we let S N equal the sum of these terms it will be a plus 3a plus 1 put that in bracket 5a plus 2 plus and then so on um, until we get to the nth term 2n minus 1 a plus n minus 1 then for whenever you're doing a, a proof of a arithmetic series sum you, this method normally works where you reverse all the terms and add add the two lines up. So if we reduce, sorry, let's just move that back a bit. If we if we write down all the terms now, but in the diff, in the reverse order, we've got two n minus one. So I'm just putting this term at the front. Two n minus one here, a plus n minus one. So that comes from there. And then if we carry on going, we would have at the end, this would be at the end. So we would have a plus A at the end. Before that term would be 3A plus 1. Before that would be uh, 5A plus 2. 5a plus 2 and now we add these two rows together uh, to give us 2sn equals now looking at this if we add if we add uh, what's here to what's here we, we're gonna have an extra a term and it's going to give us two. Oops, sorry. Let's do it in blue. It's going to give us two n a plus n minus one. Just in case you're not sure where that comes from, uh, we're doing what's on top, which is this a plus all of this. So if we add those together, just to do a bit of extra working out down here, 
plus n minus 1. You can see that when we multiply out this bracket, we get 2na minus a plus n minus 1. And we've still got this a at the front. So these are going to cancel, okay, which is where this comes from here. Uh, so that will that will give us this, but all of these terms will also give you the same thing. So I just clear that out of the way. Obviously, when we add this to this, it's going to be the same as what we got when we added uh, the two things at the front. So we can write that down at the end here, that we get the same as we got at the front, 2na plus n minus 1. Um, so if I draw a line here to show that we're adding the, the two rows above, and all of these terms will be the same, so we'll have another 2na plus n minus 1, and so on. Now, you need to think about how many of these there will be. Well, there will be, if you look at the top, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to n. So there will be n of these. So there's n of these. So if we were to multiply this all by n, what we could do is just take one of these, multiply it by n, and that would be the same as adding up all of these terms. So the left hand side over here, 2sn, is going to equal n times by each of these terms, which is 2na plus n minus 1. So now we can uh, divide everything by 2. You can see it's starting to look a bit like this formula, which is where we should end up. Uh, so 2na plus n minus 1. Now I don't think it's obvious what to do next really. we uh, You can see it's starting to look like this, but it's not that obvious what to do. So if ever that happens in a proof, I think it's always a good idea just to write down where you need to end up at the bottom and then hopefully it will become more apparent as to how to go from where we are here to how to get to here. So if we, if we write this down, we've got uh, 2a plus n minus 1, 2a plus 1, like this. Now I, I would suggest just going back a step, if you just multiply out these brackets and see what happens, um, let's have a look what happens. So we'll have 2a from the front, but then when we multiply out the brackets, we're going to have 2na. Uh, what's that going to give us? That will be plus n minus 2a and then minus 1. And that's good because that is exactly what we've got above it actually. If you if you look at this, if you these a's would cancel, so actually this does equal this row here. So by by going to where we needed to end up and kind of going back a step, we've now really completed this proof. Uh, you might find a, a better way of doing this, um, but that's how I would do it anyway. Part B uh, looks a bit more straightforward. Part A was quite hard work, uh, but B, I think what we can do is just put A equals 4 into the formula given in the question which I've written at the top here. So if we do that, we, we know that when we have, um, when the term, the sum of the terms is 11,225, a equals 4. So if you put A equals 4 into the equation at the top here, we've still got N. We don't know what N is. Uh, we do know that A is 4. So 2 times 2 times 4 is going to give us 8. 
Still don't know what n is, uh, but we know that 2a plus 1, that's going to be 9, isn't it? So we've got that now. Um, might be a nice idea to multiply everything by 2. So that would be 2, 2, 4, 50. Yep, I think that's right. And then these brackets, we could probably simplify these brackets a bit. Um, if you do that times that, that times that, you're going to get um, in the brackets 9n uh, minus 9 here plus 8. So that would be 9 and minus 1. And then it looks like we've got quadratic to solve now. So let's get everything on the right hand side. That would be 9n squared minus n minus 224. 22,450. Uh, now I, I think it's fine to just use your uh, equation solver on your calculator. And if you do that, you'll, especially, especially given there's only three marks, I would just use your calculator to get n equals 50 or n equals minus 449 over 9. Uh, you can't have negative terms in, in a sequence. It was not this sequence um, at any rate. So we can forget about that one. And n is gonna, n has got to equal 50. Um, so I think that's the answer. I'll just make it clear that n has to be greater than 0. Um, so that implies that n must equal 50. last part of this question doesn't look very nice, uh, but I know if I write down the first few terms of this series, I know it will help me to understand what's going on a bit better. When n equals 1, I'm, so we, we're going from 1 to infinity, uh, so let's just write out the first few terms. When n equals 1, we're going to get a half sine x. When n equals 2, we're going to get a half sine x. But that's all going to be squared. And then we'll get a half sine x all cubed. And so on, all the way up to, inf all the way up to infinity. So we, we're going to need to use the sum to infinity rule here. By the way... Um, this is going to be um, a geometric series because we multiply in by a half sine x each time, aren't we? Multiplying by a half sine x here to get the next term. So it, this is a geometric, and we're going to need to work out the sum to infinity. And the sum to infinity form formula is a over 1 minus r. Um, that only works provided modulus of r is less than 1. Uh, but we'll come back to that in a minute. If we if we look at this, you can see the first term is a half sine x. So we've got a half sine x over 1 minus r. r is what you multiply by each time. So you've got an, uh, another half sine x. So that is the answer. But it looks it'll look look nicer if we get rid of those fractions, uh, get rid of the halves. So we can multiply the top and bottom of a fraction by whatever we like as long as we do the same to both. So that will give us 2 minus sine x on the denominator. Now this, so this is the answer to the the question, evaluate this, but it does, it, the question does say justify the vali validity of your answer. Now this formula is only valid um, it's only valid uh, if our modulus of r is less than 1 so we need to show that that is true in this question but in this question you know that a half sine x is a half sine x is r and sine x is always between uh, sine x is always between minus 1 and plus 1 therefore a half sine x is always between um, is always between minus a half and plus a half. So therefore, um, half sine x or modulus will be less than one. So it is valid.
this is true 